Hello, hello, good evening. Good evening to some, and as I always say, good morning to others. This is Apostle Dr. Shimona Wembley, and I am so excited to join you all for another episode of Faithful Moments. I would like to um, get started with a small prayer. So, Father God, I thank you for this time of fellowship. Father God, I thank you for allowing us to gather. Father God, we come before your throne of grace and mercy. And Father God, we repent of our sins, both knowingly and unknowingly. Sins we may have committed through our words, deeds, or actions, Father God, we repent. And Father God, I ask, Father God, that you will decrease me, Father God. Decrease us so that we're able to receive your word, your wisdom, and your knowledge. In Jesus' name, amen. I am excited to join you all for another episode of Faithful Moments. And again, I am your host, Dr. Shimona Wimbley. I apologize for small technicalities, but something didn't work out, so that's okay, because there's always a plan B, right? So, uh, again, I want to thank you all for joining me on today. And, you know, I want to um, start off with a word that the Lord had given me. And the, and the Lord had given me a word to deliver to a group. It was a word that um, was very difficult for me to deliver. Uh, and God said, if you don't deliver it, the blood will be on your hands. But once you deliver it and they don't receive it, then it's on theirs. So it took me a little while to, to gather together um, to present this word. And so I sent out an invite. And I want to share with you guys that they're over. 30 people in this group. Can I tell you out of 30 people, three people showed up to receive the word of the Lord. I was very specific <laughs> in what God was, um, was telling me to do. And so, you know, sometimes when people look at you or they are too familiar with you or you're too common to people or you may be too familiar to people sometimes they can't receive what's in you because they know you from your former they know you from your place of lack they may know you from uh, you know your past sins your past life you know um, whatever they knew you from but when God does a transformation and he begins to utilize you as his vessel as his source, as his mouthpiece, as his mouthpiece, sometimes people can't receive what you have to say. And you know what? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You took on a mantle. You took on an assignment to do the work of the Lord. That's what you, that's what you did. So your only obligation is to do and follow the instructions that God has given you. Not what a man has given you. Okay. And so I just want to um, go ahead and begin to <laughs> to share. Uh, excuse me. No, 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 no. Begin to share with you what um, what that scripture was. I, I, You know what? Am I going to share with you what the word was? Yeah, I am. The word that God gave me was... Um, to de deliver and to say that something would become extinct if the people didn't begin to change from turn from their sins and to turn their life around. And so for me, um, that seemed like something so easy to say, right? But it was the group and the audience that I was going to say it to. And I know it was like, blah, 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 blah. You know, first of all, we don't believe in prophets. Second of all, you know what? You're, you're just Shimona. You're not, to us, you're not Dr. Shimona. You're not Apostle Shimona. And you know what? Furthermore, we don't even know if God even spoke to you and told you to give us this word I or whether or not this was your judgment call. And so, again, that's why I said, you know, sometimes we can be um, too 
familiar. You know, the word of God says that a prophet is never received in his own hometown, his own amongst his own people. So with that being said, you guys can relate, right? <laughs> you may have tried to share something with your family. You may have tried to share something with your friends. And, um, and lo and behold, they can't even receive the message. Man of God, I thank you for joining us on um, this for you probably is morning, evening, or even this morning. So thank you so very much for joining um, joining right now. But, you know, some of you can relate. We are, you know, our posture with our family, with our friends, sometimes is just too familiar, you know, especially if someone is older than us. Right. And um, and they've raised us. Well, guess what? It's hard for them to receive from us. But God told me to go to the book of Zechariah. And I was blown away when I began to read where he was leading me. And so I'm going to read this to you. Remember, I said God told me if I did not release the word that the blood was on my hand. But if I released the word and they did not receive the word or how about this? They didn't even want to hear the word. Then guess what? It's on them. So I'm going to share with you a scripture that God warns about. Zechariah is coming from Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. So let's see here. I'm going to um, come on down. Okay, Zechariah, I'm going to start at chapter 7, verse 7. And it said, Should you not obey the words which the Lord proclaimed through the former prophets when Jerusalem and the cities around it were inhabited and prosperous and the south and the lowlands were inhabited? Then the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, said, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Execute true judge justice, show mercy and compassion, every one to his brother. Do not oppose the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor. Let not let none of you plan evil in his heart against his brother. But they refused to heed, struck their shoulders, and stopped their ears so that they could not hear. Yes, they heard their hearts. I'm sorry. Yes, they made their hearts like flint, refusing to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. Thus great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it happened that just as he proclaimed and they would not hear, so they called out and I did not hear, or, or I'm sorry, and I would not hear. I'm going to read that again. This is Zechariah chapter 13 where I am now therefore it happened that just as he proclaimed and they would not hear so they called out and I would not listen said the Lord of hosts but I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations which they had not known thus the land became desolate after them so that no one passed through or returned for they made the pleasant land desolate now is that not a word is that not a word from God when we don't want to receive the word of the prophet or if we don't feel like a word came from God 
and we turn on deaf ear or we we don't even want to listen we don't even want to receive the word from the man or woman of God thus said the Lord God said he made it clear and I would not hear them he will not hear them when it's time for them to pray and cry out unto him whatever his prayers are whatever they're asking him for because he sent his prophet in today's time, I know a lot of people say, you know, we've experienced so much. We've experienced um, false prophets and we've experienced, you know, um, people prophesying for money or for things and for so on. But let me tell you, men and women of God, in this day and time and in this season, God is beginning to raise up men and women of God that may be familiar to you, may not be familiar to you, but they are people that are so out for God <laughs> and putting his agenda before their own agenda, before their own money, before their own greed, before their own needs. And guess what? They are going to release the word of God and they are not going to compromise. Hello. So get ready. So, you know, you might want to pray to God right now in this season and time for discernment. You might want to spend time, you know, looking in, taking a deeper look at yourself. Check your level of faith. And guess what? They say you know them by their fruit. What is their fruit? What is your spirit man um, telling you, showing you? What is God revealing to you in this season and time? Like, you know, based upon your relationship with Christ, what is God speaking to you in this season and time as to what is going on? And this, what we're going through right now, you are going to need spiritual discernment. You are going to need to be able to, you know, close your physical eyes and stop listening to the stuff that is coming. But you need to close your eyes and use your spiritual discernment. Spend time with God fellowship and with God, a deeper relationship with God so that you are able to hear his voice. You are able to know true men and women of God that are coming before you, releasing words over your life. What are you connecting to? You know, who are you connecting to? That's what you're going to have to discern in this season and time. Not, not the uh, going with what's popular, not going with, you know, what you used to, not who's going to give you what's comfortable, who's not going to give you correction, who's not going to rebuke you, who is not going to give you something that's sound doctrine, that's lining up with the word of God, that's not going to compromise God's standards in this season and in this time. Hello. You know, it just ama it amazes me that um, that you know I listen to I listen to people I listen to believers and it's like I kind of have to pick and choose um, who I'm going to talk to who I'm going to um, chat with excuse me on the phone who am who am I going to do business with. Because I need to be in line with those people that are in aligned with my beliefs. I need to be in line with people that are in line with my belief. It's time out for compromising. It's time out for, you know, um, want to straddle both sides of the fence. We can't do that. Um, it opens doors. It opens doors. It opens doors. It opens doors. And a lot of times, if we're not making sound decisions, if we can't hear God, what's right, what's wrong, it will affect our children and our grandchildren. It'll affect our bloodline. It'll affect our finances. It will affect our relationships. It will affect our marriages. In this season of time, we cannot compromise we can we cannot compromise you know we see so much that is going on right now right you know we've seen um award shows and 
I stopped looking at award shows a long time ago because I, I understood what was taking place. And, um, and you know, I don't know. I'm going to say this. And, you know, you guys feel free to jump in and comment and tell me what you think. I believe that, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe God reveals things to us different levels, different times. And it's based upon, you know, how much of God that you want. OK, and I always say this, like um, some people that are believers, they go to church and they read their Bible, they study their word, they know the scriptures. And, you know, that's enough for them that they're OK with that. And guess what? There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But for some of us, like we really want to know God, you know, the place where I was, how I deepen my relationship. I remember um, coming home from college and. You know, I've always um, been brought up in church, in the Baptist church, Baptist daycare and and so on. And come back home. You still come back You go to school in the Baptist choir in the at college. And, and I'm telling you everything, literally. But it was one one Sunday, Easter Sunday, when I came home from college. And I had this question, you know, the pastor was sharing the story and. You know, he talked about how Jesus, you know, rose on that day and all this stuff. And so it was something in me that just said, you know, God, I listen to this every year. Like literally, you know, we go to church and we can kind of map out what sermon we are going to hear based upon the season, the time, the holiday. What message will be said? I said, God, I hear this every year I said but I'm, I only believe this because I've been taught to believe this but I want to know if this is real for myself and you know what I'm quite sure there are a, a lot of believers that are saying the same thing you know you know we're taught to believe we're taught to believe that Jesus died on the cross but that's just one portion one aspect of what the Bible has um, brought us but it also said that he died and he rose again. Guess what? So that we can walk in the same power, authority, and the same dimension as Christ. So that's the piece that I was like, okay, but this is the piece that's missing. And this is the piece that I want to know. And because I wanted that, I wanted a deeper relationship like God like I need to know this for myself so in order to get that God is like okay seek me you want you want me and that's all God is saying God is waiting for us to make a decision and to say you know what God I want more of you God I want a personal relationship with you God I want to walk in everything that this Bible says am to walk into God I want to walk in the same power authority and the same dominion that your word says God I don't want to just you know read it and it not in my life not be an evidence of it I want to see it feel it touch it embrace it in the mighty name of Jesus so that was my revelation and when I tell you that was the beginning of my journey so for me I wanted more than to just satisfy to say okay I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, I know my Bible, I know my scriptures, and guess what, I'm going to heaven. That wasn't enough for me. I wanted to know God on a personal relationship. So when somebody comes to me and tells me, hey, you know, um, this Bible was written by man, and how do you know this stuff is real? And, um, well, you know what, if you want to know if this is real, ask. If you want to know any portion of this is real, what portion fake, what what portion didn't line up. I remember I remember when I was um, working at a hotel and I was watching a YouTube video and the YouTube video um, came across something that automatically started playing, talking about the lost Bibles. Made me so angry, so mad. I said, they always coming up with something new and blah, 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 blah. And guess what? I clicked the video and turned it off. And you know what the Holy Spirit said? The lost books of the Bible are real. But 
guess what? Man didn't give me that revelation, but it was because I had a relationship with God and I can hear from God. And I was able to receive that. He told me that the lost books of the Bible are real. Okay. So I'm like, well, God, you talking about the law. I, I haven't even mastered this book. So you mean to tell me now I got to go back and study and, and hear some, some other portions of the Bible. But this is what I'm talking about when you, we talking about building a relationship with God. God will speak. He'll speak. He'll give you revelation. So I said, God, listen, this Bible said I would do greater works. I was not settling. God said we will do greater works. Well, if we if we not walking around confessing or praying and expecting healing to take place if we're not walking around seeing and expecting miracles to take place if we're not walking around and expecting deliverance to take place then baby we got we have a serious problem because then this this book is not coming to life and everything that god says that we're supposed to have and possessing it is not it's not manifested something is wrong the book is not wrong, but it's something in us because we don't believe and we don't receive that it can be done. And that God said that he will utilize little old us to perform those things. I'm just crazy enough to believe. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe on this day that you can do all these things that the word of God says? Do you believe? That's my question for you today. Do you believe? Do you have faith the size of a mustard seed? Look, where my little mustard seeds are? Here is. Y'all know I have to show y'all my mustard seed every time because I got to keep renewing y'all. I have to keep renewing y'all faith. I have to keep y'all focused. Renewing the faith. Renewing your faith. Renewing your faith. This mustard seed is so small. It's hard for me to even grip it to even share with you. I don't want it. Okay. Look. Look at that. Do you believe that you possess power and authority the size of a mustard seed according to the word of God? Say what has been revealed. Amen. Say what has been revealed. So, you know, um, going back to that, Jackie, when I talked about when God gave me the revelation and the word to release, right? The prophet comes to serve warning. But the prophet also has the authority or the abil ability to pray and cause things to shift. And it's according to your faith, so shall it be. So if the people receive, you know, whatever, and we pray, we can shift and we can change things. But if they don't even want to align, they don't want, even want to hear the word, then how can they come in agreement <laughs> that things are, you know, could even be worse than what their current situation is? But because they didn't receive, they couldn't come in agreement and we couldn't pray to ship. You know, of course, of course, constantly I am going to pray, but um, other people's faith has to be able to line up and come in agreement with that. Amen. Amen. So this has been great. I hope you guys receive something out of that today. I am going to post that um, scripture on here. It was Zechariah chapter 7, starting at verse 7. And I believe I went all the way down to 15. I believe I went all the way down to verse 15. So I will post that on here. And I am excited that we are continuing to move forward in the things of God. I hope that we are remo um, renewing your faith, transforming your mind. And guess what? Don't become so familiar and so um, see people as so common that you cannot receive from them. Because you know what? The word of God or your release or your breakthrough could come through them. Amen. Amen. So I am going to pray now and um, we're going to go 
Go ahead and end this live. If there's anything that you all would like for me to pray for, to come in agreement with you, um, I am more than happy to do that. And otherwise, we're just going to pray. And, uh, and we are going to go forth. You guys are seeing me real natural today. I could not get this. I was supposed to upload something and it didn't work. And it was like, hey, so now you guys see me sportswear, no makeup, all natural. <laughs> oh, God. So, but Father God, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for this time of worship. Father God, we thank you, Father God. That you are taking, Father God, your word and you're utilizing social media. You're utilizing, Father God, men and women of God across the nation, across the world, Father God. To take the globe for Christ through this broadcast. So, Father God, I thank you right now for the men and women of God that saw your vision, Father God, and carried it through in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father God, we come before your throne of grace, Father God. Being grateful, Father God, and we thank you for your mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. We repent constantly, Father God, because we don't know whether or not we have had a, a thought that did not um, line up with you. We don't know if we spoke something out of our mouth, Father God, that was against your word, Father God, or against you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, even our actions, Father God, we repent right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you will cover each and every one of these listeners, Father God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you will begin to touch our eyes, Father God, for those that are wanting to go deep in you, Father God. I pray that you will give them a deeper revelation of who you are, Father God. Your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I pray, Father God, that you will anoint their eyes. Give them spiritual eyes to see, Father God. Anoint their ears, Father God, so that they may hear your voice in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, for your word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and all things shall be added. So, Father God, I pray that our Parties will begin to line up, Father God, with your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I cancel any assignment of the enemy against their life, Father God, against their businesses, against their ministry, against their children or their grandchildren in the mighty name of Jesus. Every negative word that has been spoken against us, Father God, we cancel it right now in the name of Jesus and with and by the blood of Jesus. Father God, I thank you right now. For this network and Father God, I thank you for the fellowship and the time in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So I thank you all and you all have a great evening. God bless you.